Well, FM24 is here with early access, albeit by the time you see this it might have been a couple of days, but that's splitting here because first up it's our first Let's Play series on the channel for this new cycle. And to start things off, ladies and gentlemen, step up to the platform, show me your tickets please, because it's time to head off to Plymouth Argyle and we're getting there on the Wayne train. Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of the Wayne Train here on Sean Does FM4 FM24. I hope you're doing well and come out today. We'll show you guys the premise of the save and also play our first game of the series as well in the championship where we do take on Huddersfield. Hopefully we can get off to a good start there despite the fact that we are going to be one of the favourites to go back down to League One, which of course Plymouth Argyle did come up from in real life last season. So looking forward to the new save here on the channel as well as all the FM24 content that I will put out for you guys this year. And do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are looking forward to that content, then also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated. But we start off with the club info for us here at Plymouth Argyle, we take over from Stephen Schumacher. I'm pretty sure that no Plymouth Argyle fans actually want this to happen, but it is going to happen because we are going to do things this year on FM24 with a little bit of a New Zealand focus, and it starts off with us trying to get Ben Wayne to lead these guys to glory, so it does mean we might have to build an interesting tactic to make sure that that is the case, but this is the club history. They've got Mark Hughes as an assistant manager. I'm pretty sure it's not that Mark Hughes if it is that could be interesting, but I don't know how long the Simlo staff are going to hang around anyway. But as you can see, they do come up to the championship off the back of a good season in League One. I actually believe that they come up as the champions. Ben Wayne coming in halfway through last season. As you can see, our transfer budget is zero. The wage budget, not too bad. And also, you might be able to tell there some future transfers are going to come through as well as loans. And that is because this save is being done in real world mode and also with the first transfer window being disabled so we can get through this first part of the season a bit quicker. Don't have to worry about getting through the transfer window. Just going to deal with this squad as Steven Schumacher has done in real life. And from January, that is when we can start to do some of our own business. It's going to be interesting to see what he has done when these players do join the club. Obviously, I'm pretty familiar with Ben Wayne, but not so much with the Plymouth Argyle squad. So this could be a bit of an interesting save for me as we do try and get Plymouth Argyle first up to the Premier League, and from there, hopefully, into a European competition. This is an early access save, but it will continue a little bit longer than the early access saves the past couple of years on FM have. That is because I've got a wedding coming up early next year, so I think it's just easier for me this time around to do two saves. But there was the club info that we did get through, and now it's time for us to get stuck in to the club vision and all that sort of stuff here for Plymouth Argyle. Off the back of us taking over as the manager, here is the club vision and expectations, meaning what they expect from us for this first season at the club. They expect us to develop players using the club's youth system. Obviously, with Ben Wayne being our figurehead for the series, that might be a little bit interesting. Some of the strikers, they might not get as much time, but hopefully we can promote a few players from our youth system. Also, just the basic ones as per usual, work within the wage budget grow the club's reputation, maximum one-year contracts of players over 33, minimum two-year contracts of first-team players, and in terms of on-pitch stuff, they want us to attempt to avoid relegation from the championship. Hopefully, we can do that with these transfers that Schumacher has put through before we relieved him of his dues, and also just be competitive in both the FA Cup as well as the EFL Cup, and from there, hopefully, start to become established in the championship, and as I said, maybe get ourselves up towards becoming a Premier League club. Also, supporter profile. The supporters do have a moderate influence on the board. The supporters want us to play entertaining football, also be attacking, develop those youngsters who do come through the club's youth system, also get the better of Exeter City when we happen to play against them. Just a quick look at where those guys are. They are in League One, so hopefully we don't cross paths with them unless it is in a cup competition. And they also want us to attempt to avoid relegation in the championships. So to be fair, expectations not too big on us for this first season hopefully that does mean that we can just make sure that we're not in any danger 
of getting sacked here at Plymouth Argyle. But obviously the save is based around one man in particular, the fellow New Zealander. And that, if we skip over the squad introduction and already looking at this, it's a pretty thin squad. So hopefully there's a few few transfers coming through, especially with those injuries already. There's five of them. They are red ones and some of them do mean players will be out for a couple of months. And I'm starting to wonder if disabling the first transfer window was such a good idea. But our main man for the save, he's only got three star potential. Hopefully he can just go a bit better than that. And it is Ben Wayne. He will leave the line for us here at Plymouth Argyle. So it does mean that maybe to get the most of our squad here at Plymouth Argyle, we're going to have to use a bit of a different tactic to what you usually would see with this Plymouth Argyle team. But Ben Wayne will be our main man throughout the save. He will start as many games as physically possible and hopefully lead us to glory, as I said, not just in domestic competitions, but also potentially in a couple of seasons' time in Europe as well, if we can get Plymouth Argyle that far. And having just gone forward a few clicks off the back of that club introduction and whatnot, I have just started to set up tactics here at Plymouth Argyle, and I think this might be the one that early doors looks the best use of the squad that we do have available to us here at the Pilgrims, albeit with future transfers coming through this could change, but early stages, I think we're going to use a Gagan presses going over to the squad planner and having a look at the comparison. If we have a look at the physical stats of this team, you will be able to see once we get rid of goalkeepers, they are quite a fit team and also pretty good stamina compared to most teams in the championship. So I actually think something like a Gagan press could work for this team. It should work in terms of that attacking and entertaining football that the Plymouth Argyle board do want us to play, but I think we're going to go here with a 4-2-4. That does mean that our midfield's a little bit bare, but at the moment, we don't have that many midfielders who are fit, and it also means that both Ryan Hardy and Ben Wayne can start up front. We did use Ben Wayne on stream last year at St. Mirren for a season and a half as a pressing forward, and he was absolutely brilliant in that role, so it does mean that he can go back into this role here, and we know that is a role that he can perform well in, but I think the first tactic we're going to use in the safe potentially might be a 4-2-4 but obviously with a lot of players injured this could change going to the first game of today's episode the first one of the competitive season against Huddersfield in the championship but I think early doors we might try and get the squad going to a 4-2-4 but at least in a Gagan press style with that positive mindset so hopefully we can tick off some of those board objectives and in terms of those transfers that are about to come and obviously no transfer budget remains so it did actually mean even if we did enable this first transfer window we might not have been able to do too much albeit still £63,000 left of wage budget but quite a few transfers still would come in. Connor Hazard a goalkeeper coming in from Celtic in only about a week or so's time also a defender in Bali Mumba at left back from Norwich, a lot of midfielders coming in, so maybe we need to up that midfielder quota from the two that we currently have, that could be something that might be worth doing, also a couple of wingers as well, but thankfully no more strikers, I think we're pretty good there at the moment with both Ben Wayne and Ryan Hardy, but we've got quite a few players to still come in here at Plymouth Argyle in real world mode, we'll come back shortly and we'll just see what else we can do before we get into that first game of the season, we will take on Huddersfield. And before I can get too far, and in fact, before we can actually hire a proper set-piece coach here at Plymouth Argyle, they are asking us to get through this set-piece induction. To be fair, I probably should have actually turned the induction off for this so we could wait a little bit longer, but our assistant manager, Mark Hughes, it is not that one. He is a lot younger, but he is currently the set-piece man for us here at Plymouth Argyle, so it's time to get through this new feature in the game, which hopefully is going to make sure that set-pieces are a lot easier. So a couple of questions here that we do have to answer before they do draw up some set pieces for us here to use. At Plymouth Argyle, first up, what defensive marking strategy do we prefer? Either zonal marking, player marking, or hybrid? For this, I think we're going to go with Mark Hughes's preference there and player marking going up the back of that. What post do we want players marking while defending? Now, in the past couple of seasons, I've put players defending on both posts, but to be fair, it might not be a bad idea to have one extra man in that aerial fight, so we're going to go again here with the staff preference, and that is just the near post, because to be fair, that is usually what the AI does in a football manager going forward. Now, how many players do we like to leave for when defending? They want us to defend the box. I actually think it might not be a bad idea to chuck a couple for just in case we do want to do something on the counter attack. Off the back of that, starting to look now at attacking set pieces. We'll go near post. We'll also be balanced with our defense during those attacking set pieces. And we'll go for the staff preference here for an outswinging corner instead 
of an in-swinging corner, and we'll see what Mark Hughes does come up with. And there's what the set piece does look like. And as you can see, now things are ranked in terms of aerial threats, box threats, creators, and recovery defenders. And you can actually rank those differently on another screen once we do get past this induction, which I think will exit shortly. But to be fair, this is probably stuff I should be taking note of, being a newer feature to this year's game. But that is very, very slick already. Nice quick there to get a set piece up for us a near post corner with an out swinger and hopefully off the back of this we can create a few more options. We can get a couple of routines going here at Plymouth Argyle and hopefully when we do make substitutions it does mean like in this scenario here it juggles things around a bit better than it has done on previous versions of Football Manager where it can really jumble things up in terms of those set pieces. Hopefully this time it's a bit smoother and a bit more sensible with the players that they are putting there for those set pieces, making sure that we still have a tall man attacking the ball at that near post. And then you can see how you can arrange those priorities in that bottom right corner. So first up for us, it's corner taker, then aerial threat recovery defender, box threat and creator. To be fair, Ben Wayne actually quite high on a couple of those in terms of box threat as well as creator. But that is the priority that Mark Hughes has put them in. We could put creator a bit higher, but I think we'll just leave it for now and see how that does get on during the early stages of the season as well as pre-season, but that looks very slick, a big upgrade on what it was in past football managers. There is the new set piece creator. We'll just go forward and maybe create a couple of other options. We can hopefully bamboozle the opposition defense in the championship this season. And only a few clicks later, we have actually created a couple more of those set piece routines. So off the back of that, we've actually got a far post corner. And as well as that, we've actually done a third routine and that is a short corner. So we're gonna take one short and then put the ball into the mixer and maybe even put it onto the edge of the box to score some nice goals like that. So it was actually very easy to do, get those set pieces done. It just drops down from a menu and is quite easy to select. I've not had to touch anything so far which is nice indeed. And also you can go down there from that set piece tab and select things like long throws as well as free kicks. But the set piece creator gets a big thumbs up from me. And hopefully now we can make our way forward towards the start of the championship season, pick up some good results in pre-season and see what those new players look like before we take on Huddersfield. And going forward about a month off the back of those set pieces coming and also doing a big staff overhaul to Beefy. We've actually just changed our set piece coach, but for now, they're actually quite happy with our set pieces. I think I'm going to get one chance to create those set pieces. So we might see how that goes. That does seem a little bit weird off the back of hiring a new set piece coach, but they don't ask you to redo that. But there you can see our staff now at Plymouth Argyle are pretty good, albeit somehow we've ended up with one extra performance analyst somehow, but the staff here are now pretty good, and we've got a pretty decent team now in terms of numbers compared to what it was at the start of the season, going into our first game in the championship, and at home as well against the team in Huddersfield that did struggle in the championship last season. I am hopeful we can pick up a result on this opening match day, and this is a team that we are going with for this first game of the season, albeit once players do come back from injuries, that will change. In particular, in goal, Mike Cooper, definitely the first choice here usually at Plymouth Argyle. And for us, is going to be the vice captain with that three and a half star current ability. But unfortunately, he is still out for a little while with an injury. So it does mean that one of those new transfers that was coming in in Connor Hazard will be our starting goalkeeper for the early stage of the season. He comes in from Celtic as a cup goalkeeper. And thankfully, Plymouth Argyle did do that because otherwise, that would be a very weak area in our team. But Connor Hazard for the early stages of the season will be in goal for us. Going forward to defence, Kesler Hayden is in on loan from Aston Villa. He looks like a good right back who can also cover left back. Wing backs are actually areas we're quite weak in at the moment. But unfortunately, because I disabled the first transfer window, couldn't even sign someone on a free transfer. So that could be a bit of an issue, something we might have to sort out going in to the January transfer window. But Kesler Hayden looks like the best wing back option that we do have here at Plymouth Argyle, the young 20 year old on loan from Aston Villa. Hopefully, maybe we can get him here in the future if we do get enough money. Our centre backs do look decent as well. We've got Julio Jose Pugazado, the 26 year old out of Spain. He looks like a decent option, albeit to be fair, as attributes are all in the yellow. Nothing that stands out too much, but he looks like a decent player with three and a half star current ability and potential coming over from FC20 for the start of this championship campaign for Plymouth Argyle alongside him in a ball playing defender role. It will be Lewis Gibson, the 23-year-old who does have quite a bit of potential. Now that left back, one of our new signings, Bali Mumba, will start as the left back. That is because, as I said before, 
quite light on numbers and the wing back position here at Plymouth Argyle, especially at the moment with some of those injuries that we are dealing with. To be fair, I think this guy might be a bit more of an attacking threat. Now, wing back is on to theme with this gay and press style that we are using, but he's a very good player. Comes in for £1 million from Norwich after being at the club on loan last season down in League One. So hopefully he can do a decent job for us at left back, especially while players like Saxon early in particular as well as Galloway and Gillespie are all out with those injuries. So as I said, left back at the moment, a little bit of a problem area as is right back in terms of overall numbers. In terms of the midfield, as you can actually see something I did forget to mention, have now switched to a 4-2-3-1 Gagan press. So it's the very traditional football manager style. That is because with some of those transfers that Schumacher did do with real world mode, quite a few of those were attacking midfielders. So it did feel like maybe having three attacking midfielders would be a good idea. So we've now gone to that free midfield system instead of having two up front. So it does mean now that Ben Wayne is our lone main man up front with Ryan Hardy behind him on the bench. But Adam Randall is our balling midfielder for the first game of this season. Three star current ability, three and a half star potential. He looks like a decent player. And in the DLP role, actually a player that we used, I believe, at Cardiff last year on our save in FMOE. And that is Lewis Warrington. He comes here on loan from Everton. Interesting to see he's got a bit of a target there. That's not set from us, I believe. But I think that might be from Everton. And that might just mean if he gets that, he might get a look in there at the Premier League club or maybe by the even Championship club for next season. There's definitely not a target that I set considering I did not do the deal. But Lewis Warrington for this game, anyway, this first one of the season is our starting DLP. That is because Horton is suspended, Jordan Horton, and he is usually just a little bit better. So Horton would usually be, I think, in that DLP role, but for the first game of the season, with that suspension, it will be Lewis Warrington. In terms of the attack, another new signing here, Morgan Whitaker, very good player, three and a half star current ability, four star potential, can play all across that front four, but obviously with Ben Wayne being the main man for the save, we will chuck him out right, and he comes to us also for one million pounds, but previously was at Swansea and also spent some time here, nine goals on loan in League One last season. Hopefully he can do something similar, if not better, up in the championship. Our cam is Callum Wright, who previously before Whitaker got here, would have been our starting right winger. He looks quite well suited to that attacking midfield role with three and a half star current ability and four star potential out left. Mikel Miller will be our left wing starter for the first part of the season, albeit that could change once a few more of those left backs do come back. Maybe we can even chuck someone like Mumba further forward because he does look like he has the highest star rating of the team in that left wing role, but unfortunately with that current situation at left back, Miller will be the first choice option there for the early stages of the season. Obviously, Ben Wayne, he will be the focal point of this save, always up front, even though he's only got two and a half star current ability and potential. Hopefully, he can perform a little bit better than that. Interesting to see he's already wanted by Perth and McCaffrey FC in the A-League on loan. No chance that that is happening, especially with this transfer window being disabled. And our bench, we've got Callum Burton as the current backup goalkeeper, albeit that won't be for too long once we do get Cooper back from his injury. Joe Edwards as a right back backup, but can also cover left back. If needed, we've got Dan Scar as a backup left back. There's a couple of left back options in this team. And to be fair, he's quite a decent one with three star current ability and potential, and also looks like quite a good aerial threat as well. So might actually work his way into the first team if he does some decent stuff for us. From those set pieces, we've got Matt Butcher on the bench as a defensive midfield option. He is our backup balling midfielder for the most part. A couple of players for this first game of the season, though, are coming up from our under-18s, the likes of Caleb Roberts, just because we're a bit thin in those areas with some of those injuries. So Caleb Roberts as a DM option. Also, Freddie Asaka, a very promising winger with four-star potential, the 17-year-old out of Wales. He might be a player who could feature for a long time in the save, but currently... He is on the bench. A new signing in the cam roll in behind Callum Wright. Finazaz has just joined us here in the week leading up to this game. Also on loan from Aston Villa. Like our right back, he is a quite good player too. Three and a half star current ability. Four star potential. So quite well served there in that cam roll. It's one of the reasons I did switch to that 4 2 3 1. Did feel like with those transfers coming in, having a cam was quite a good idea. And our right wing back up will be Tyreek Wright. He was injured for most of the preseason, has just come back. In the last week or so, two and a half star current ability, four star potential. He looks like a decent player at 21 years old and obviously a player who for most people playing with Plymouth Argyle probably would be the starter at striker, Ryan Hardy. He will be on the bench, albeit he hasn't actually scored a goal for us, I believe, in preseason. 
and he also missed a penalty. So Ben Wayne is now a penalty taker because it's the Wayne train, obviously. So that's our team going into this season. As I said, still a few players out with injuries who can make their way into this team, especially those ones who are covering left back from the likes of Saxon, Early Galloway, and Gillespie as well as that. Horton would usually stay on the DLP and Cooper in goal. And also still a few players yet to come here and a couple of attacking options who will join us a bit later on off the back of this game. Luke Kunder will come here on loan from Wolves yet again and attacking midfielder options. We're going to be quite strong there in that central attacking midfield area. It might actually mean that Callum Wright can go back to being a cover on the wing. And also Mustafa Bundu will come here from Underlecht right on transfer deadline day, a wing option who can also cover striker. But to be fair, I think he will be one of the better players at the club when he does get there. Just having a quick look at those attributes for the 26-year-old who is out of Sierra Leone. So that's what those transfers that have been going through have done for us going to the start of the championship season. As you can see, our wage budget has actually decreased. So even if we did want to make a transfer, not too sure how much we could have done, but hopefully that does mean we're in a good position now to at least pick up points on this opening day of the championship season. Having a quick look at the season preview, we are all the way down in 24th. The favorites to go straight back down. Hopefully we overperform that a little bit. If we don't, We'll need to deal with that when we do get in to the January transfer window. But first up, we take on a team predicted to finish 22nd last year in the championship in real life. They did come 18th, and that was Huddersfield Town at home. As I said, I like to think this is a game we can pick up some big points from, and hopefully Ben Wang can continue what has been a pretty decent preseason for him. We'll just change this to make sure that the view does have the goal scorers in. But as you can see, he's been doing a pretty good job. Actually, I tell a lot earlier, Ryan Hardy, did get a couple of goals in that game that we did take on Wickham Wanderers. But the big news, we come through preseason undefeated. To be fair, most of those games we were with that 4-2-4. But that most recent win over Sheffield United from the Premier League was with the 4-2-3-1. So a free to win over those guys in a game where we were, well and truly on the front foot. Quite encouraging going into our first game of the championship season. As you can see, Ben Wayne, he picked up a goal. Also had one ruled out for offside. Not too sure how seriously Sheffield United we're taking this game, but still, we actually gave a couple of players who needed game time some in this game, so it was a pretty good performance, not quite at full strength, and hopefully we can put out something similar here in our opening game of the season, where we do take on Huddersfield, first game of the season, Southampton, they picked up a win 1-0 over the 10 men of Sheffield Wednesday, we'll skip this stuff, because we're well and truly familiar with what that does for us here in football manager, and get stuck in to the first game on the Wayne train in the championship here, at Plymouth Argyle and see if the 4 2 3 1 Gagan Press can continue that good form from the preseason. We'll get stuck into the action here. Obviously, the championship is licensed in football manager. One of the big reasons that we can do an early access save in this league because obviously all the uniforms and logos are included and it's quite slick looking. But there are the teams as ran through before. We're on the left hand side, Huddersfield Town on the right hand side. As I said, hopefully, this is a game that we can pick up some points from. And if not, hopefully, at least. Ben Wayne can get on the score sheet and he can just give us a bit of encouragement for the remainder of the save time to pump him up and thankfully he seems just a little bit happier. Hopefully he can chew, chew, chew along and score a few goals for us here at Plymouth Argyle. But there is our team as we ran through before the lovely championship graphics and also the new match engine. There's quite a bit of stuff happening here in FM24 that is new. There's quite a bit of player movement that is different. Also a couple of new roles, albeit we're not using any of those. But hopefully we see a bit of it here in this first game of the season. Also, if you watch my content from last season, I am going to stick this time with direct view, albeit if they keep showing shots like that, not too sure how long it will last because that was a pretty awful one for the first that we did see for the save, but it's time to get stuck into the action. Our home opener, unfortunately, Huddersfield, they get the first shot off, and so far, position-wise, are on the front foot here, but we're starting to get back on top of them here, heading up towards the 15-minute mark, as something might be about to happen, as we just make sure that we can get out of this tutorial, as we're quite familiar with the game, but here's our first highlight, as a set-piece, Randall puts that one into the mixer, they get it away, but Mumble will spread that one back out now, right on the edge of the box, the forecast, and the Miller, but they further away do Huddersfield, and thankfully, Kesler Hayden, is there 
to tidy things up. Can the Wayne train open the scoring for us in the championship season? We keep the ball there just down that left hand side. They float this one into the mixer for Wayne. And he does score the first goal of the season. It's a bit of a messy one. But the Wayne train is underway here at Plymouth Argyle. It's only taken 14 minutes. Gets a little bit of help there from the underside of the crossbar. Thankfully, we just do enough here to keep that ball down the left hand side. Rhodes makes a real test of himself. But thankfully, Mumba puts that one into the mix of Ben Wayne. Not normally known for his goal scoring through headers, but that is a great start to the Wayne train here, and it does put us 1 0 up. We'll just go and praise him, just have to check the, uh, where that praise button was, because I'm used to a different skin to beefy. The FM skin this season this year does actually look quite decent. And about halfway through the first half, it is a free kick, unfortunately, that time. We don't quite link up with anyone at the far post, and Huddersfield might get a chance here to equalise, but that is a brilliant start to the save. Ben Wayne with the first goal. In a competitive game, albeit hopefully we can hold on here to our one nil lead. Tries to put pressure on them here when they try and make their way forward. Down that left hand side, as you can see, the lighting this year does look a lot better, and also the player movement a lot smoother as well. We get the ball back there through Lewis Warrington. That pass a little bit behind Randall, but thankfully he keeps it. Now Kesler Hayden tries to burn a man there down that right hand side. He puts that one right into the mix of it. Unfortunately, it is pulled off the line by a Huddersfield defender to keep it at one nil. But early stages, the two highlights that we have seen. We are on the front foot in this game. Hopefully we can make it two more sooner rather than later. Randall again can't quite pick anyone out at that near post. Again looking for Wayne that time far. Unfortunately doesn't get his head on the end of that one. It stays 1-0 coming up to the half hour mark. But off the back of a little bit of a shaky start. Well and truly now on the front foot. Now a long throw. We're going to try those this year. Apparently they are quite OP. We keep the ball off the back of that. And now here's the Hayden again. Burns his man down that right hand side. That could be a big weapon for us. Takes on a shot. And it's a decent effort there. And also just noticing. Off still got the game sounds on. So we might just deal with that before we get stuck into anything else here. If I can, can we get rid of the game sounds? We can. So we'll just make sure that that's not going to play over the top of my voice. Hopefully that wasn't too much of an issue. But we're not going to replay this with a 1-0 lead. A corner. And that time it was our centre back from Spain who gets his head on the end of that one but unfortunately good save there from the Huddersfield goalkeeper but it's fair to say we're well and truly on top in this championship season opening off the back of that we take a short corner this time we go for Miller at the far post tries to head that one down unfortunately Huddersfield clear that away but thankfully nothing doing from it still well and truly on the front foot we'll praise the guys but hopefully we can grab a cushion goal going in to the second half it's a free kick here Whitaker's going to take this one Let's see how he gets on. Just points players and directions there. And that is a stunner from Morgan Whitaker. He also gets on the score sheet. Does a brilliant sliding knee there into that left corner. And that makes it 2-0 at home park. Morgan Whitaker, one of the new signings here at Plymouth Argyle. Stephen Schumacher, thank you. Because that is a wonderful free kick to put us 2-0 up just before halftime. And so far, things going pretty well for the newly promoted team here in Plymouth Argyle. 2-0 and based on stats, it's fair to say that is a well-deserved scoreline. Ben Wayne with the opening goal, which is brilliant, off a Mumba assist. And then Morgan Whitaker with that wonderful free kick. So far, everyone out there on a good ring. So I don't think we need to make any substitutions going in to that second half. So we'll tell the guys that we're pretty happy with what's gone on so far. Hopefully it does continue. We're a bit weary with praising them too much, but hopefully that doesn't backfire. Everyone pretty happy going into the start of the second half. And hopefully we might be able to kick on here and boost up our goal differential nice and early in the championship season. Especially with some tough games coming up against the likes of Watford and Southampton off the back of our first game in the EFL Carabao Energy Drink Cup. This has been a pretty good start to life here at Plymouth Argyle. The 4 2 3 one working as per usual. First highlight of the second half and it is Huddersfield trying to play out from the back. Good slide tackle there from Miller and we start to swamp for Whitaker. Bit fortunate to keep that ball now right with a shot. Forces a good save there out of Nichols. Looking for that bottom right corner. It goes into the stands. It's fair to say the graphics on this year's game I think look a bit better. It might have more to do with the lighting, but also that smoother player movement. It does look like a pretty different game to FM23, which is quite nice. And coming out to the hour mark, it is still 2-0. We'll just check in here on some player fitness and see if we need to make any substitutions. But everyone at the moment, is in pretty good nick, albeit Cullen Wright not doing that well. And we do have a cup game in only a couple of days' time. So we'll bring on Finn Azaz in his place. Also, Mikhail Miller not going that well. We might give the youngster Freddie a sucker some game time here out on the left wing as well. But apart from that, everyone else out there 
is on a pretty good rating, and we'll get into this last half hour still with a 2-0 lead. Now, a corner, Whitaker puts this one towards the near post. Gibson wins the race to that. Now, Randall with a shot from outside the box. It's an absolute screamer top right corner. Just curves that one onto the postage stamp, right into that top right corner. 3-0, and we're definitely picking up three points from this opening game of the season. A really good performance, and hopefully, this will be enough to hopefully give us some confidence of staying in the championship for this season, being the relegation favourites. But this is a very good opening day performance, 3-0 here at home park. We'll just go forward a bit more here and see if we need to check in and make a couple more substitutions. With a busy early season schedule coming up, that might not be the worst idea. No one so far down to a red heart. But we might actually take off Kesler Hayden, seeing as he is on a 6.9. Everyone else out there is on a green rating, so Joey Woods can come on for him. We might also make a couple more subs in a couple of minutes' time as well, just to make sure some players do get a rating. But before that can happen, another corner looks like this time. We're going to take this one short. Whitaker picks out Azaz, his first start for the club, having only come in in this past week. And it's a good chance there for a sucker to get on the score sheet, but unfortunately that shot takes a big deflection from a Huddersfield player. But things going very well for us here on the opening day of the season. At the Pilgrims, again, we try and pick out someone near post. Doesn't actually look like that's working too well. We do win a foul off the back of that, Lees. He picks up a yellow card. And shortly off the back of that, it's a corner on the other side. It's headed away there by Nakayama. But Helix put his hands there on Edwards. And a chance here for Ben Wayne to pick up a double from the penalty spot. He might actually get a chance here to make it a hat trick. If he can put this one away, and he does, he sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. Ben Wayne with a double on the opening day of the championship season, and the home park faithful, they are starting to love him here. The Kiwi striker, of course, my only favourite personnel in game is actually Rory Fallon, another former New Zealand striker, hopefully Ben Wayne can make his way towards there, and off the back of that, before we can make our last couple of subs, it is a highlight here for Huddersfield from the restart, but this has been a really good opening day performance, as I've said a couple of times, the Gagan Press certainly working, hopefully with that good stamina and fitness that the initial squad did have here, at Plymouth Argyle, it's a style that we can use for all of the season, albeit it might hurt us in terms of injuries. Now, Radoni there might have snuck offside. He did, in fact, it's a free kick to us. And even then, we did get a decent block on that shot that Huddersfield did get off. But trying to make our last couple of substitutions, Morgan Whitaker having a brilliant game, but is down to a red heart. Tyreek Wright can come on for him. And with our last substitution, we're definitely not taking off Ben Wayne on a hat trick. I think we'll give some game time to Dan Scar in place of Giulio Pleguzello, I might butcher that name a couple of times in this save, because it's a bit of a tricky one, but Dan Scar, he can come on for him being quite a good threat from set piece, let's see if he can get his head on the end of anything in the last 10 or so minutes of this one, but it's been a really great opening day performance, 4 goals to nil, and 3 points as you'd hope we would get in a game like this on the opening day of the championship season, it's another corner here, this time we were looking for Gibson near post, but unfortunately those aren't quite working, so maybe we need to change that from near post, albeit probably a few more games that we can let that play out in before we do make changes to that preferred set piece, but thankfully we get the ball off the back of a Huddersfield clearance now, right? Can he set up Ben Wayne here for his hat-trick Azaz? He takes on the shot himself, he could have squared that one for the Wayne train, but unfortunately he was a bit selfish there was Azaz, took on the shot himself, albeit we'll still get a chance here from a corner, that was a big chance there for Ben Wayne to get a hat trick. Unfortunately, though, they didn't look for him and nothing comes from the subsequent corner. Now we're into injury time, and this is a brilliant start to the save. We'll bet there's still six minutes of added time. The hat trick chance might not be over. And Dan Scar, as we suggested, might be the case. He scores from a set piece. So he could be quite useful coming in with that good jumping reach and heading that he does have, and he makes the most of it just inside the first minute of injury time and makes it 5-0 and this is an absolute bumping that we are giving to Huddersfield here and it does mean early stages we are right near the top of the championship and that is a dominant display at home park interesting camera angle there too for the post match that does look like that's a little bit new but that went about as perfectly as it could Adam Randall actually picks up the player of the match with an 8.9 but Ben Wayne can't be too far behind with two goals on the opening day of the season, but that was a very good performance here in the championship season opener, even though it was against the team who are expected to struggle this season, but still, a result like that does just give me some hope that we can avoid a relegation battle here at Plymouth Argyle this season, 5-0. It's a great start to life here on the Wayne Train.
So a great start to our first save of FM24, a 5-0 win there over Huddersfield, and it does mean that for now we are on top of the championship table thanks to Gold Differential, albeit that might change when we do come back for tomorrow's episode, but early stages, top goal scorer joint Ben Wayne with two, a little bit of a shame that Azaz didn't try and square that one late for him to pick up a hat-trick, but that is a brilliant start to the season, does look like the 4 2 3 one Gagan press will suit us as long as we don't get too tired, but hopefully when we get a few more players coming back from injury, that might not be as much of an issue as it currently looks like it is, but I think that will do it for the first episode of this FM24 Save the Wayne Train here with Plymouth Argyle. Great start for our main man. He picks up two goals to start things off in that 5-0 win over Huddersfield. If you enjoyed this episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up, on the video, and if you're looking forward to this series as well as the other content coming to the channel on FM24, then also consider hitting that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. We'll come back for the next episode. We do play Coventry in the Cup off the back of this. That will be a tough game, but I don't think we'll focus too much this season on the Cup competitions. I think staying up in the Championship we're doing as well as we can in that league will be the focus, but a couple of big games coming up off the back of that, which I think we'll come back for. First up, we'll travel away to take on Watford. They also picked up a win on the opening day of the season, and then we take on a team who got relegated from the Premier League last season. That'll be a big acid test for us in that third game. In the Championship, we'll take on Southampton, and also during that episode, should get a couple more players coming through the door with those real-world transfers that did come through, and also I'll make sure that the sounds aren't on for tomorrow's episode because that was a bit of a nuisance hopefully didn't prove too much of an issue for those guys but definitely no match sounds for those games in it tomorrow's episode but we'll come back for a tricky double header as we take on Watford and Southampton and hopefully the Wayne train he can chug along off the back of scoring two goals in that opening game of the season but until then for that Watford Southampton double thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and I'll see you then cheers <laughs>